Yeah, so um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Desha. I'm an Ensemble Metazoa Bioinformatician. Today, I'm going to talk about next flow migration in Ensemble Metazoa. Ensemble Metazoa comp comprises of two main projects, that is Ensemble Metazoa and Viewpart TV. So we are service providers. We basically generate omics data for non-vertebrate metazoan species, eukaryotic pathogens, and host and different model genomes. We also have uh, different comparative tools such as Apollo, Blast, etc. And sorry, uh, to generate the data, this is the overview of our workflow. Uh, these are the different pipelines that is uh, that we use. That is prepare genome pipeline, genome loader, and dumper pipeline, and various intermediate pipelines, which is also maintained by different teams in Ensemble. Um, we have a two months release cycle, so normally we generate twenty to fifty species per release, and we get uh, we get requests from our collaborators through an RT system, uh, which has an assembly accession and the platform they would want the data from. So we download the data and then standardize the files. That would be the FASTA GFF files, and then load it into our CodeDB, which is an ensemble database, and then perform post loading that involves uh, repeat modeling, RNA features, DNA features, adding XREFs to the uh, adding XREFs to proteins and doing different data checks. And then we dump the data as a part of our release cycle. Um, so the current workflow manager that we are using is eHive. eHive stands for Ensemble Hive. It is internally maintained workflow manager. So it works via interconnect and see here's an analysis and um oh, sorry um yes i think that is it and then you have uh this is the diagrammatic view and you can also look into the parameters that's used and the resources and other things in ehive so uh why we are moving to next flow. Uh, eHive mostly uses Perl and some Python as scripting language, but next flow is adaptable and can use any scripting language, which is very beneficial. Then the portability, eHive is uh, maintained by Ensemble and it can only be used by the users in Ensemble, whereas next flow can be used by anyone and um, then conversation and images, which is very useful for our pipelines. Um, modularization, uh, eHive uses a scripting language. eHive, sorry, in eHive, the script is mostly em embedded around the wrappers, whereas in Nextflow, we really like how the modularization is, that is in terms of modules, sub-workflows, and workflows. And Nextflow has a very active user community. So we can use the tools that is already present in uh, NF Core for our pipelines. And it has a strong sub community support, so it is well maintained. Um, Nextflow is also used by different teams in Ensemble. So they, we, they use different Docker images, use it in Kubernetes, and store data in cloud. So it is widely used, and that is very helpful. Um, these are the pipelines that we currently have that is in eHive, and we want to migrate into uh, Nextflow. Uh, some of them are in the span of one year, less than one year, I would say. And there are some complexities due to the dependency on Perl, and we would like to first move our scripts to Python and then uh, use Nextflow. So that is why some of them are still in progress. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the geno genome prepare pipeline. That is one of the pipelines that we have already migrated to Nextflow. So in that, we get the accession request from the collaborators, and then we download the data from INSDC. 
we process the data and also create a metadata for the FASTA files that we get and as well as the GFF file. So the GFF file that we produce is more users required. So we produce a simplified version of the GFF file and the metadata for that. And then we perform data checks, that is check, just check the schema of the uh, metadata that we produced and do a overall integrity check on, on the model, all the models. So this single pipeline is run on 20 uh, to 50 species per release. So, and this is a command line screenshot of uh, how Nextflow has run on this pipeline and this parameters that we used. Uh, we really like the modularization of Nextflow. That is, it is uh, separated into different modules. All the processors are in different modules. And then we have a sub workflow for each pipeline that we have, we have migrated as well as a main workflow from where we can access the pipelines. I would like to show you the repository that we have. Um, okay, this, that's okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, so this is the workflow uh, folder where we have the main workflow that is uh, with help message and how to use the pipeline and uh, and we are calling the sub workflow here for genome prepare pipeline, which I can go into. And this is the config file where different parameters are defined and we are also using singularity. So we have enabled that here. Mm -hmm. We, and here is the sub workflow for each pipeline that we have. The, for genome prepare, this is uh, under sub workflow. We also have a main NF where we have called all the modules that we used um, for the workflow. And yes, uh, we have also this is something we are just starting to do. So we have uh, we are trying to use. Uh, some of the structure framework from NF Core as well. So this is a product repository, but we are trying to be in compliance with NF Core as much as we can. Um, here's the meta YAML file, which is a summary of the pipeline that we have. This is the genome prepare pipeline and all the modules that we use, the input files that is expected and the output files that we get. So yes as well as uh, based on the last uh, text flow text uh, NF test talk, we are trying to incorporate tests into our workflow. Right now it is a Python test really, not an next flow test, but that is what we want to do later. But yes, this is in a YAML file and this is what we are doing now. We also have, uh, sorry, we also have documentation on how to install uh, Nextflow, which is mostly in compliance to the repository that we have. So there is instructions on that and some issues that we have seen. Yes. Um, then some of the issues that we have seen and what we have done about it. Uh, one of the issue that we are facing right now is uh, Nextflow does not have a very good interactive error handling. Like here is an image from eHive where you can see that if a job has failed, there is a red box and you know that something has failed and you can go back to the analysis and restart the job. But whereas in Nextflow it says failed, but uh, what we are trying to do here is we run 50, 20 species at a time, and we would like Nextflow, we would not want Nextflow to break the pipeline, but rather exclude that species and then go on to next ones. But that is something we are trying to do, and we are not able to do it yet. Um, the other thing is synchronization. Um, when we were using e eHive, as you can see, one semaphore is run and all the, all the files from that semaphore is collected and then it goes to the next 
analysis that is manifest maker that basically gets all the files and created creates an md5 checksum but that is something that we did not find in nextflow so we had to group everything by tuple that is using a key here for this pipeline that would be a gc accession and then having all the files uh grouped to that accession so that's how we are able to use synchronization here uh we uh, not very happy with the vis visualization itself in nextflow this is an html file of the same workflow whereas as you can see in ehive it's a bit more clear for us so that would be helpful and the other issues that is faced is debugging and documentation is not that clear and uh we are trying to move from Perl to Python. That's why we are some of our pipelines are still not complete. The migration is still not complete. And uh, I would like to thank my team for uh, the knowledge share and the hard work, as well as the wider Ensemble team. So yes, this is what we are doing in Nextflow right now in Ensemble Metasol. Thank you.